up till now we talked about absorption of water through the root hair from the soil so in this uh, particular uh, chapter when we said we were we are talking of movement of water we said we divide this into two steps first is absorption of water which we have already discussed and now we are going to discuss how this water which has reached up to xylem vessels is going to go up so the heading is going to be ascent of sap ascent of sap that is upward movement of water so movement of water upwards that means now from the root it is going to go up to the top course level of the leaf so here it is going to go up there are various factors which are responsible for this movement of water upwards the first force which helps is known as root pressure now we need to understand what exactly is this root pressure and how much of water can be uh, moved upwards with the help of this pressure that is going to be created we said through root hair the water goes in through these cortical cells and endodermis up to this xylem vessel if this process which is a passive process that is movement of water which is passively taking place the water goes in and from the cell to cell up till xylem if this continues that is absorption of water continues and transpiration that means loss of water stops due to closure of stomata if we make this arrangement just to understand how this movement is going to take place say here is a leaf and on this leaf here is the stomata so water first enters from this root hair up to the xylem and from this xylem it is going to go up up to this stomatal aperture and from here it will be lost through evaporation that is what the process of transpiration is so if this inward movement continues and from here this water loss also continues then whatever quantity or molecules of water enter the same more or less will be lost but if the stomata are closed then this loss of water through transpiration stops but inward movement continues in that case the water which is continuously moving in creates a pressure in the root xylem and that is the pressure which is known as root pressure so condition for root pressure generation is absorption of water continues and there is low or no transpiration that means if transpiration is negligible less or totally stop and continuous movement inward movement of water takes place that results in generation of a pressure due to accumulation of water which is passively moving in results in generation of a pressure and that pressure is known as root pressure this pressure is enough to pump or push water only by few centimeters to understand this if we take a rooted plant a rooted plant water it properly and cut this plant few inches above the ground level and as we have cut it just above the ground level we have removed all the leaves and everything that means there is no scope of transpiration and in the soil enough water is available that means through the root hair water is continuously moving in but there is no loss due to transpiration and as we cut the stem at a very short height few centimeters above the ground level this much of water column is built up due to this root pressure and we would start seeing water droplets coming out from the top which is known as oozing of water this is actually the sap which is coming out that means few centimeters water can rise because of this root pressure 
but when we are talking of tall plants which are like 20 feet 25 feet or even more tall then this pressure is not enough to pump that water upwards but it helps in small herbaceous plants here again we will talk of one more situation related to the root pressure only it is known as guttation guttation is loss of water loss of water in the form of liquid water as liquid water through structures called hydathodes hydathodes are the openings which are present at the leaf margin so if we take a proper rooted plant and herbaceous a herbaceous plant and the roots are there, the normal root hair and everything and here the plant is small with the leaves. Now on the margins of these leaves there are openings. These openings are known as hydathodes. When absorption continues, this normally happens during winters and early mornings. The entire night water is available continuously going in, root pressure is created and when the sun rises, the opening of stomata is going to take some time. They will open a little later in the morning. Till that time, transpiration has not begun and because of root pressure, the water has risen by a few centimeters. Now, because of this pressure, a column of water gets built up which fills this entire xylem which is inside this. There is no outlet of stomata right now. Only outlet which is available is this hydathode. So water rises up and from these openings, tiny droplets of water ooze out. That is known as guttation. Again, the conditions when the guttation takes place is absorption of water is high or continuously taking place and loss of water by transpiration is zero or negligible that results in root pressure building up and that root pressure pushes the water a little up and ultimately that water is going to come out through hydathodes which are present at the leaf margin so one pressure or one force which helps in this process of ascent of sap is root pressure though it is not going to push water much higher few few centimeters is what it can pump or push the water up which is sufficient for a herbaceous plant plant but not for a tall angiospermic plant so let us see other factors which are responsible for this movement so after uh, root pressure the next important force which is responsible for this ascent of sap is transpiration pull transpiration pull and this is the most important force with which the water is going to move up and this is more than enough to pump or pull this water up to the topmost level of the leaf even in the tallest plant now this transpiration pull also works on certain principles before we take this uh, principles let us talk about the process Transpiration is loss of water in the form of water vapor through stomata. So here it is loss of water in the form of water vapor through structures called stomata. That is through stomata and this is where it differs from guttation. In guttation that was loss of water in the form of liquid water and the openings through which that loss takes place are hydathodes. Here it is same water which is lost but it is in the form of water vapor that is gaseous air and that takes place through stomata. So this is the definition the structure through which this transpiration takes place are stomata. So through stomata, this transpiration takes place. Now let us talk about the structure of stomata and how does it help in this movement or loss of water. Dicot plants 
have stomata with two guard cells and these guard cells are bean shaped or kidney shaped. So when we draw these guard cells, they are bean shaped or kidney shaped. And we have to remember that in these guard cells, the inner wall is thick as compared to the outer wall. And the reason is if the wall is thicker and when the cells get turgid, whichever is thick shows bending or curve. So when this guard cell becomes turgid, the walls are going to stretch and wherever it is thick, you will be seeing that depression. And due to this depression, this opening will be wide. So this is the guard cell. In case of dipod, we said it is bean shaped and this opening is known as stoma. Around these guard cells are other epidermal cells and these epidermal cells are known as subsidiary cells. So these are called subsidiary cells. These are the cells from where the guard cells are going to take ions as well as water. In these guard cells there are cellulosic microfibrils which are arranged radially and because of which also the opening of the stoma takes place properly. So these lines which we have drawn here are cellulosic microfibrils and these microfibrils they are radially arranged so that when it gets turgid the wall stretches towards the outer side opening this middle part that is the stoma. This is the shape which we see in case of dicot stomata. In case of monocots, the guard cells are dumbbell shaped. So the shape itself is different but only thing common is that the outer and the inner linings or layers they are thick walled. So this is one guard cell. This lining would be thick walled. This membrane would also be thick walled. And this is where is the other guard cell. And here also the inner wall is thick and outer wall is thick. And here also the guard cells are surrounded by subsidiary cells which are again the epidermal cells. And the inner opening is same, it is known as stoma. This is, this is the guard cell and these surrounding cells are subsidiary cells. Amongst the epidermal tissue, it is only the guard cells which have chloroplasts. So in this, there are chloroplasts also. That means they have this pigment, green pigment in here. And here also there are chloroplasts, other epidermal cells do not have chloroplast. So this structure which we have drawn here, they are chloroplast. Opening of guard cells depends on endosmosis. So when the guard cells have to open or the stoma has to open, what guard cells do is they take ions from these subsidiary cells. From these subsidiary cells, sodium ions, Potassium ions are actively taken in, that means by expenditure of energy. When these ions move in to the guard cells, the concentration here becomes more. That means the inner medium becomes hypertonic. Because of this movement, it gets hypertonic as compared to the subsidiary cells. And we have already talked of this, that water moves from hypotonic to hypertonic. That means from subsidiary cells, guard cells took ions actively. By taking these ions actively, it has created hypertonic condition within itself. And because of these subsidiary cells losing these ions, they have become hypotonic. Water will move from outside, that is subsidiary cells into the guard cells. Guard cells will swell and this inner wall will get stretched. When it gets stretched, this opening will be visible as a wide opening. So this is one theory 
which is responsible for opening and closing of stomata that is endo and exoosmosis. Later on we will also talk about one more hypothesis of uh, which results into opening and closing which is known as starch uh, glucose uh, theory. We will talk about this later. In this case it is iron movement which is responsible. When the stomata have to close they actively pump the ions back to the subsidiary cells. Once the ions are pumped out the concentration decreases they become hypotonic and the subsidiary cells which are receiving these ions they become hypertonic. So now in this case water will move from guard cells to subsidiary cells. The cells, guard cells will become flaccid, the inner walls will become loose and they will come closer like this. So the stoma will become narrower and finally it will close. So opening and closing of stomata is controlled by the movement of ions followed by passive movement of water. So now when the stomata are wide open this is the opening through which transpiration takes place. In dicot, guard cells are kidney shaped or bean shaped. In monocots, they are dumbbell shaped. And guard cells are the only epidermal cells to have chloroplast. Now, stomata structure we have seen. We have also understood opening and closing. So let us now talk about those factors or the principles on which this transpiration pull works.